Yeah, no problem. So um, with regards to CT scanning, guys, like, look, I think that it is, um, there are some risks associated to it. I know that there's a company now that is offering um, $75 to look into a box. I haven't, I literally, the news just dropped today, so I watched OK J Love's video on it. He did, he did cover it really, really well, but I was kind of in the car and I had it on in the background. Um, look, I already spoke about this previously um, in one of my comment sections on one of my videos where I said that there is a use case for authentication. Now, in, instead of it actually, my hot take is instead of it actually crashing the market or killing the market, I think it would be the opposite. Um, and the reason why I think we'll do the opposite is because we are not going to know what boxes have been scanned and what boxes have not been scanned unless we're told they've been scanned. So it, it's neither here or there. The ones that are being scanned will be scanned and those will be sold at premiums if they hold specific kind of cards in them. So that what that actually does is it actually lifts the market up on those products in general, right? But I think the here and now, um, it's, it's really difficult to say. Like, I don't know for sure whether or not it's going to make a big, huge impact immediately. They're still working on being able to look into cases. They're also look, still looking, into, um, looking through multiple booster boxes. Um, I think the drive towards the logical drive would be that buying from a non-trusted secondary gray market source will become a bit of an issue. And that is more to say like there'll be drive towards buying either from official distribution, um, from the Pokemon company direct, or buying from, and I, I use the term trusted sources loosely, but I do know some people that I would trust um, that I've built up a relationship with and have a rapport with over, you know, over time that I would happily buy to your product from knowing that this had been through a CT scanner. So then I think in that case scenario, the, you know, the, the best, or the most trusted will win. And it'll probably kill off a lot of secondary market sellers um, if it becomes accessible and they're able to look through cases. But again, like I said, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know exactly what's going to happen in the future. But it is, for, it is definitely concerning that they can look into boxes and, you know, at some point they're probably going to be able to look into cases as well. And it's accessible to anybody and everybody at a very short, small cost, $75, you know. And that's actually quite scary. Yeah. Uh, are they... Because I, I stopped at the... Um, the, the fact that we're looking at packs. Are they already still, uh, I mean, are they looking into well, boxes now? Okay, J-Love did a video. Make sure you watch it like he did it today. Um, oh. I've had my disagreements with J-Love in the past. We've had conversations. Great guy, though. Really, really good person. Um, he did a really good video on this. Yeah, make sure if you have time, guys, make sure you go and check that out. Obviously, subscribe to Mara and myself, but <laughs> check out J-Love. Um, he covered it quite well, but they can look into booster boxes now, bro. Okay, okay, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, I spend my days either studying or, yeah, mostly I'm just studying. gonna top up, yeah. I'm just yeah, gonna top yeah. up, I'll be back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, uh, what I think is so, Bass talked mainly about how it would affect the market, um, being. A man of science, a young man of science, I have two thoughts. The first one is uh, how I'm not surprised these things exist. Uh, we can send rovers to Mars, we can send uh, shuttles onto space, traveling out of the solar system, out stretching onto the Milky Way. Uh, yes, uh, the allocations uh, for that those projects are completely different, uh, but I'm not surprised. Um, 
And uh, what I'm surprised of is I haven't I, I've only heard the news and uh, I've seen some you know pictures, videos of you know the scans and the the hollow that was recognizable. Um, so my what I think is the other thing I think is are these sources I'm not talking about jail I'm talking about people sharing these pictures videos of scannings are these sources reliable the reason I say that is being again once again a young man of science and an evil flipper if I were to build a machine that could scan packs and boxes and I was able to know just not without opening a box if there was a card worth pulling that could make me profit so I could open the box open the pack make money and sell the other packs or boxes why would I lick that information would it make more sense to shut up use it to my advantage and make a ton of money I don't get that part that part as a rational individual is what I'm missing well I can I can try to sort of touch on that so looking at it from a business perspective I think that there is a use case for making it public knowledge because yeah you could maybe scan I don't know 10 cases of evolving skies and be able to pull out one Umbreon VMAX, which is not guaranteed to be a 10, by the way. And you could pull out the Rayquaza and the Espeon and all of the evolution, right? From that, say those 10 cases. The cumulative value, and you can do this across hundreds of cases and thousands of cases, like somebody like Rudy would really benefit from this, right? But the average person won't. So, the business case of it would be with that there is millions of people with millions of boxes and millions and millions of products that would be potentially willing to pay $75 a pop per scan. So the money you would make would actually, it, it potentially, and I haven't done the numbers on this, I'm just spitballing now, I'm just literally just spitballing this. But having heard you while I was getting the drink, I was just thinking, like, if I had access to hundreds of thousands and millions of people that are willing to pay me $75 a pop just to look inside the box, I'd probably make a lot more money than I would being able to scan every single box on the planet and pull out all the chase cards. And also, the one concern I have about this, actually, which I haven't heard anybody speak about yet, I hope this makes this live go viral, by the way, when it's published, right? <laughs> for your we sake, hope. we can only hope for your sake as well as my own. Is can the people doing the scanning be trusted? And I that, tell you this. That because, was first, one of the first thing I said. I said, I, I said, is this source reliable? And I said, I'm not talking about jail of reporting the fact. Yeah. Are these people leaking? The f you know um, announcing that there's this CT scan is that real also say it is real and which is possible you're, to you're, be honest you're the average Timmy and you send your fusion strike booster box in just the one box and there's one of these in there right and this card is now worth a thousand dollars how do I know that the people doing the scanning will just take a, a booster box that doesn't have the Gengar in it, and send it back to me and say, "Sorry, mate. Oh yeah, there was no there was no Gengar in there." Which kind of goes back to my point. Like, why would you announce it if you know you mentioned about the business model which you can make, which I agree. Also, you mentioned you know seventy five, eighty dollars to charge to scan a box. Is that just a random number, or had they announced that? So, um, again, like I said, I was listening to Jay Love's video in the car while I was driving, and he mentioned a $75 cost per item. I think it is per item. So you could send in, 
I don't know, 10 booster boxes and the $750 to know. scan all 10 boxes. So yeah, oh, that, that would always... But I, I might be wrong. I might be wrong, by the way, but this if, is what I heard while, if, I, was, while you know, I was driving. If that was true, which I doubt, because that would only make sense for a vintage or high-end products. It wouldn't make sense on a modern box because roughly that would be, you know, 75, 80, roughly be your EV on a modern box. So it would make sense to open it or not scan it. It wouldn't make sense to, you know, send it and pay that price because that's your EV. So that box would ready that box is ready worth seventy five eighty dollars if you the moment you open it. Yeah. On average, it's, that's what it's also the it's the cost benefit analysis. So like I think inept uh, inept card collector said this quite well, and this is actually something I I'm sort of exploring now because obviously we're not going to know all the risks. You know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. But I think there's a use case for verification for ultra high end vintage. Uh, a really expensive pro product in the Pokemon hobby. If you're talking about Pokemon, there's obviously you mean, Yu-Gi-Oh, you there's mean, Magic. You mean like authentication or? Uh... Authentication. Oh, so yeah. we can see what's inside the box. So like, you know, like a base set, a shadowless base set box or a, you know, first edition box or even, you know, just the, just the normal first edition jungle or fossil, whatever. So I think there's a really good use case for that. Now, whether it's used for that or not is... You know, it's but, all speculation. I mean, at that point, though, you you, you would know the, the content of the box, though. It's like you would say, okay, this box is legit. The cards in, in the box are the cards from the set. But you'd also know what cards they are. Oh, yeah, of course. 100%. I mean, so like, look, if this downside. is... That is the downside. So, you know, the, the use case for something like this is like, you know, the whole Logan Paul thing. Again, that's, you know, it's, it's questionable whether or not any of that was genuine. It was probably all made up anyway. But let's just say it was genuine. In that scenario, it would have been very quick and easy for them to verify. Are these packs genuine packs yeah. from, from the set or, you know, are they G.I. Joe packs? I mean, and, I, you know, that, that whole saga would never have taken place. Um, I mean, these I services. Think Inept is correct. Bro, I do think Inept is correct. I think the average reseller is going to struggle and have problems if this becomes widely available but we still have your uh your game stores who just who just get product want to churn and burn you have your big box retailers you've got your walmarts your targets your costcos who are just not going to be putting pallets of 151 upcs through scanners do you see what i'm yeah. saying and that market will just grow I think that will grow and then the people in the middle, potentially people like you and I actually, who are buying cases and booster boxes, who want to offload this product in the future, you know, the fingers will be pointed at people like us. And that's, I think, where credibility will play a huge part. You know, is this person, and I know credibility doesn't stand for a lot in the hobby because there's scammers everywhere. I've, I've been scammed, I'm sure most people watching I hope they haven't been scammed, but a lot of people have been scammed about for stuff. Inept card collector was scammed literally recently. Actually, I was following a person's, uh, you know, Instagram stories, and it'll just it'll just become a matter of of, of um, trust at that point. Do you have the credibility as a reseller or somebody like us who are investing, who will be able to offload this product? And this is where the what I was talking about earlier, the network, the connections, the people you know, makes a huge difference. Yeah. But yeah, I guess I mean, I mean, as I the first thing there's I too many is, there's too many variables. Yeah, you know that the other the other problem is again, sorry, I'm like, it's just spitballing. I'm just speaking my mind here. The other issue could be is that it becomes widespreadly available, and when you go to sell your product, the buyers go, well, actually, what we want to do is we run this, we want to run this through a CD scanner to see what's inside, and if we like what's inside, we'll buy it that creates an added layer of complexity with trying to offload product potentially. Like I'm just saying this, it's just something that I would as a business, if I was buying product and this tech was freely available at very, very cheap prices, uh, because look, it's $75 now. There's nothing to say that when this becomes widely available, we get to the point where it's $20 in the box or the same as, the cost of grading a card you know you pay 15 dollars to grade a card with psa 
you can now pay $15 to, to have a box yeah. verified and see what's inside it with a CT scan. So these are some of the risks, but obviously we won't know. We won't really know straight away. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, I still don't see the point in uh, sharing this information to the public. Um, I would have just kept it for myself. Um, because also because of not only you know I can make money if if I just just shut up and keep it to myself um, by opening packs or boxes that do contain um, hits, but because of all the troubles, all the noise, I would create into the bullion market, as well as all the, I mean TG markets. I don't know. The, I mean. Once again, I'm not surprised these things exist. As a young man of science, I'm, I'm really not surprised. I'm surprised people leaked this information. They just released it. And uh, I think that's uh, that's partially, I don't understand if it's true. Uh, is there technology there? Absolutely. Um, I, I, I would need to ask my uh, a friend of mine who is a... Uh, biomedical engineer um, and it is specialized in um, PET scans <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you know the technology is there it was just a matter of someone spending some money to build the machine and yeah look that, and that that's where the cost benefit analysis really seeps in like do you know what I mean if it depends on the, how accessible and how cheap it is so if you're going to spend $100 on a booster box and then you're going to spend another $75 scanning that booster box, is it going to work out for you if the top chase card in that set is only $120? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why, as I said, and you also say, it, it mainly works for vintage. Um, yeah. That's where the play is. There's definitely a use case there for really high-end vintage stuff. Yeah. Think with ultra modern i don't think we have to worry too much we can there'll be plenty of time for people to go out and still buy boxes cases um and and not worry you know especially if you're buying from a reputable source you should be fine you know yeah, if you're buying I mean, from resellers on ebay there might be the risk but then do the cost benefit analysis you know what's the potential to, if you're buying it to open the, the box what is the potential of somebody having scanned this when the chase card is worth less than what the box, including the scan, would be to find out what it, you know, what's inside? I just think that it's, it's the hottest trending topic right now. That's what everybody's making content on it, and it's um, sensationalized. Now, everything that makes a sensational headline does well online, and it's a trending topic right now. I mean, I made a video just talking to the camera, but over a thousand views on it. And all I would did was sit in my chair, say, look, guys, don't worry too much about it right now. And that just shows that it's the hot mm -hmm. trending topic. Everybody's going to talk about it in a way where it's doom and gloom. It's the end of the hobby. Uh, everything's going to burn to ashes. We, it's not going to happen anytime soon, in my opinion. I might be wrong, but in my opinion, I don't think it's going to make a huge impact right now. So we got an interesting thing from um, Inept. It says, you know, referring to the guy about the CT scan, showing it to the public because it's the first to market. Uh, that's historical um, and it's patent. Uh, it'll sell the patent or whatever, make millions. Um, so what I want to ask is, did it patent it? Like, uh, is that a confirmed source? He patent something like this? Or is it just you saying it did? Uh, if, you, if you, you know, that's a question. Mm, I and think that's... That very far-fetched i mean it's a ct scan yeah i, mean, I don't think you can, you can you can i don't think you can patent I mean, that technology yeah. I mean, it's and it's, it's widely available plus here's one example to show you what one point is about why would you not keep a secret um so in the uh i think it was mid 80s um, when uh, options in the market, um, not necessarily stock market, you know, options, the financial instruments were first introduced, uh, people did not know how to price them. 
they would, did not know how to sell or buy what was the you know a fair pr price um so eventually black Scholes and merton came up with the model which is now called the black Scholes merton model to price options and they won a Nobel Prize in economics for that. I think it was in the 80s, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and that's an equation that comes from uh, heat. Um, now, they were the first one to release it to release it to the public. They were not the first one to use that sort of mathematical model to price options. The people, and it's public knowledge, I mean, not public, I mean, you can fact check me on that. People who already were using that model, but j they would just shut up, use it, made a ton of money because no one else knew how to price those things. No one else <coughs> came up with that idea. So they found an efficiency in the market. They were able to price that stuff and they made a ton of money. Now that's what I'm saying. If you find something that can make you money and you have an edge, why would you release it to the public? The only way, as you said, and you guys said, it's publicity, uh, potential to, you know, market, make a different business model. I guess that's where you want to go, but it, it, I don't know. It, it just... Maybe just bro, my I, opinion, think that, I would just kept it from I, I agree with you, bro. But I think the path to least resistance for being able to really make this pay is to make it available to the masses. Because as a business, you have access to millions of people across the world. And let's not be fooled. The amount of people that are involved in the not just Pokemon TCG. Yeah, TCG. Magic, yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, or any card game, One Piece. Yeah. But wait a second, though. Uh, any card games needs to be. I, again, I haven't watched the video. Um, I always anything saw... hollow foil, anything hollow foil or textured, can be seen through the CT scan. Yeah, that that was a question. Like, what card? What what type of um, holographics can they? So see? They tested sports cards, One Piece cards. There was another TCG in there, and there was Pokemon. Uh, but by the way, this this uh, technology has existed for a while. They've been doing this in sports for quite a long time, several years, I believe, where they've been verifying boxes and contents via X-rays, as well as with Magic as well. So this has existed with Magic. So it's not something new. Yeah, I think it's just that it's being picked up now by the Pokemon hobby and the Pokemon community and it's, you know, creators are largest, making, yeah. Yeah, yeah, creators are making content on it that is causing this 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 sort of trending, this havoc, you know, people worried about it. But it's existed for a long time and uh, I don't know. I, my, my personal opinion on it, and this is just purely based on speculation and subjectivities, I don't think it's going to make a huge impact just yet. The higher end stuff, definitely. But like the lower end stuff, excuse me, um, I don't think is going to be too much yeah. of a problem. Yeah, you buy your old model like you buy it. You know, if you're investing in new new stuff, just buy from a distributor, buy from a LGS that you buy from regularly, buy from trusted sources that are not going to be sending tons and tons of cases and booster boxes. And also, look, if you're buying stuff on release, which is not always a great idea, but say, for instance, you're buying stuff at release from a big box retailer or, or some, somebody like that, they simply don't have enough time to receive the product on release, send it to get it scanned, and then send it back out to you for release. Do you see what I'm saying? Normally, when you buy stuff that you pre-order, it's with you generally on release date because official retailers get the product before release date so that they can send it out for release right so like when i buy stuff pre ordered like i bought some uh, 151 um obsidian flames paradox a bunch of stuff right? powder evolve 
when I ordered from distribution, the cases land the day of release, which means the distributor would have had it way before then to oh, be able yeah. to process, process that order for me to then get it on release day. So now if you're buying from sources like that, it's virtually impossible for those boxes to have been scanned because you're getting it on release, you know, that, that very day or within a day or two. Generally, you might have a couple of days, you know, yeah, yeah. Delay. but it's just not going to be simply practical. If you're buying something maybe a few weeks down the line, a few months down the line, then of course there is some cost concern. But bro, I wouldn't, I, I agree with you, I wouldn't, Never say never in this hobby, and I wouldn't put it past exactly your concerns as to why this has been made so publicly. Um, it's a hot take, but there's some credence to it. I think we could never say never say never. Essentially, what you're what you're saying, there could be some some weight to this as well. Because why publicize it when you can use it to make millions of millions, yeah. if not more, you know, potentially, especially with vintage. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, as you said, I wouldn't be worried, especially for modern, um, as you also need, you will need to ship the products to them. So for modern, I really see no point. Um, Look, I think the other thing is there's also another, um, light blue Lotus said that maybe this is an entry point for their digital collection. So like, I'm assuming you're talking like NFTs or, you know, stuff like that. I think it's going to be a lot more simple than that. I think the Pokemon Company International, um, it's so big and they're so good at innovation that I think they have the capacity, if they wanted to, to create the product in a way where it can't be scanned. That's not impossible either. If you can create or have technology that can look through boxes perhaps there is a way to create boxes that you can't look through again i don't know i'm not technical i'm not a science guy i'm not even a math guy yeah i mean for, first but, thing that would come to mind is like put a some sort of a shield maybe of lead uh, maybe just put some quantities of lead yeah, in yeah, yeah. Or, Something that, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's, as I, I mean, the beginning of my answer was, I'm not surprised. I mean, we send rovers to Mars, we send shuttles, you know, satellites up into uh, the middle of the galaxy, uh, out of a solar system. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised. I mean, badges. Allocations for these products are different, uh, but I'm not surprised at all this thing exists. I'm surprised they have been revealed to the public. I mean, revealed to the public as, you know, they were, it, it, it seems to me they were looking, they were sickened for attention. They were sickened for publicity, advertisement. Which if, as an app says, um, the, the guy said they're, they're trying, you know, to get a patent for it. It it would all adds up. They want to sell it. They want to lease it, and so on and so forth. That's all. I'll, that's all I'll say. It'll be an interesting few months. I think the to the back end of this year is going to be interesting. You know, I, I still think though, like me personally, I don't have any concern because I mean, and I can only speak for myself in this. I am buying from direct from source. You know, it's coming from distributors. It's coming from people that buy from distributors. It's coming directly from the Pokemon company. It's not exchanging hands on the way through. And if it is exchanging through hands, it's through hands that I know or trust. And they just simply wouldn't have the time or the, they want to churn and burn product. That's yeah. all they want. to. They want to get their allocation in. And they want to sell it so that they've got enough funds for the next allocation. And that's it. And that's where I'm buying. So I don't have these concerns. But I can see that some people could potentially, you know, but it doesn't really concern. It doesn't bother me at the at the slightest right now, you know. Yeah. It really doesn't. Agree, agree. 